Hey, Rusty, how are you? Doing well. Um, just to let you know, I have a busy day today, so I might, I'm might i going to be in and out of this one a little bit. If you ask questions of me, I, I might not be at my computer right away. And then the second hour, I have to take my son to the doctor in Indianapolis, so I'll miss that. But thank you very much. I, I thought you did a, a, you guys did a wonderful job yesterday. I really, and talking to Shad later, we really enjoyed your tur turkey chicken. Uh, <laughs> that, that really, you know, and we talked about it and we thought about it that it's kind of interesting that the turkey and chicken is the ecologist way that I look at everything, that you break <laughs> it down into the parts to get to the genetics. And then the the meatloaf version is how the molecular biologists look at it and how you go about building a chicken or turkey. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it was a real, I think, I think if you don't mind, we're going to steal that for use with our students occasionally. Absolutely. Feel free. That's it. Uh, you know, I'm so happy you like it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Um, welcome everyone back and... Uh, it'll be another great day of a uh, workshop. Sure. All right. Does that mean I can get started? Yeah, you can get started. Okay. Can I really already take the record? Yes, Radio? I, I started okay. recording. Yep. Oh, you yeah. can go ahead. Okay. No problem. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. And uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Nasty and uh, Narin, for your support. You know. In, in organizing this uh, me meeting, yeah, in sharing the material, and uh, that's uh, really you know significant uh, support to 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 my class. Yeah, thank you first. Yeah. Uh, so today we're gonna move uh, move to our second day, day two uh, presentation uh, regarding uh, single cell rna seq data analysis and the and some pitfalls. Yeah. I'm sure I cannot finish the the whole topic in in one uh, one hour. So I split into two. Yeah, which means uh, in the first uh, in the first hour next Tuesday, we still uh, taking uh, you know introduce the uh, the single cell analytic data analysis and the pitfalls. On the last day, we may introduce a topic uh, my lab is focusing on which means how we can generate and how we can infer gene regulatory mechanism from single cell RNA-seq data. Yeah, that's more related to my research. And uh, based on the instruction from uh, Jeff and Rusty, uh, I think the last day, maybe we can we can have a more discussion on, on some ongoing projects here. Maybe we can enable some collaborations. That's why I put some uh, ongoing topics uh, on, on the last day. So day two, yeah, and uh, uh, we will uh, we have two hours uh, with a one hour uh, break in between. Uh, first half introduce the background, introduce the the outline, uh, and uh, with the uh, the hour three to four p.m., uh, Ujo is uh, preparing uh, was preparing a lot of examples of using throughout, which the you know the code has already been shared with the student. And uh, if you get already, you know, implement them, that's great. Uh, if uh, if not, don't worry. We will go go through them one by one. Yeah. Uh, if uh, we are not be able to finish all the examples today, you will still be here next week for any consulting or you know questions regarding CIRAT uh, usage. And uh, we we still have uh, another two uh, two days next week. So. Uh, you know, don't worry regarding the decoding part. Okay. Uh, big data to knowledge. We mentioned this point. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, big data right now generated from a different kind of technologies, like first generations, you know, second, third generations. So it's all high throughput sequencing data. Uh, different level interpretations can be derived from uh, the data. Yeah, like from the gene protein mutation level, like we can call marker gene. Yeah. We can identify differentially expressed genes between tumor and normal. Yeah, we we can identify SMP. Yeah, so a lot of things can be derived uh, directly derived from the data. Yeah, and furthermore, we can upgrade the identifications to more system level, uh, uh, you know, interpretation like pathway. Yeah, what kind of pathway are enriched? Yeah, in in, in those uh, differential expressed genes. Yeah, what kind of uh, different uh, you know, uh, category of pathways, metabolic, regulatory, signaling pathways, yeah, are enriched there, or GO, uh, CAG. 
And furthermore, we can from go from pathway to more uh, more system uh, level. Yeah, like uh, how we you know, using the big data try to you know identify some knowledge to uh, to 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 uh, contribute disease. Yeah, disease treatment, drug target. Yeah, so those things are more translational and clinical. Yeah, so that's uh, the a big picture of. Uh, uh, big data to knowledge to different kinds of knowledge. Yeah, and uh, here is an example pipeline of uh, RNA seq data analysis. I know uh, uh, Zhang Yan uh, is also my colleague here. Uh, she introduced RNA seq data analysis uh, uh, on her class. I also, uh, he also she also shared her slides with me. Yeah, I, I know you learn a lot from her class. Uh, I only have one slide yeah, showing here, uh, like uh, what kind of uh, critical thinking we should have when we deal dealing with uh, deal with uh, the data analysis. Like this is a general RNA including single cell RNA seq, but single cell RNA seq will have uh, another pipeline. I will show you know soon later in, in my uh, presentation. But even for the traditional RNA seq data analysis. There should be a, you know, I, I call that a critical thinking, a computational thinking. Yeah, you, you know, the pipeline should not only in a, a, a linear way yeah, in, in your mind. There should have different, uh, you know, tiers or layers. So like uh, I roughly, yeah, I roughly introduced this one to my student when I train them to do some analysis. Like the first tier is always a quality check. No matter it's bulk or single cell RNA-seq data, you need to do a quality check. I know currently uh, the sequencing uh, company will, will send you a quality check report along with their risk. But I always, always, you know, suggest you can do a quality check again. Yeah, based on multiple different uh, softwares. Yeah, and uh, if uh, there are some uh, quality issue in original data. That will waste a lot of time. Yeah, maybe you need to redo all the computational analysis again after two months. Yeah, so do the quality check, trim your data, and uh, make sure. Yeah, maybe there's some multiple runs, but make sure the data are good enough to do uh, all the folding analysis. And the second tier is uh, basic analysis. Yeah, those include a lot of things like read, read mapping. Yeah, I have those those reads. There are there are maybe you know. Hundreds of uh, softwares in the public domain can do race mapping, can align short race back to the reference genome. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, I have an example slide uh, regarding those uh, 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 some uh, race mapping software later. Yeah, uh, and uh, then you can do race count, uh, you know, gene race count uh, calculation. You can do gene expression uh, normalization. Anyway, based on the basic analysis, you can generate an expression matrix, yeah, which uh, is a gene condition or gene cell expression matrix. Yeah, those that that kind of matrix can enable a lot of uh, uh, further interpretation. Yeah, and uh, the further interpretation are two further tiers. Tier three, I call that hypothesis-driven interpretation, and tier four is a discovery-driven interpretation. Yeah, that's typically. Two kinds of uh, computational things we do every day. For example, when we collaborate with uh, another lab, yeah, they have a very specific uh, question to be answered. Yeah, they they have they have uh, focused on that uh, gene or that pathway maybe for ten years. Yeah, they want to answer a, a, a question whether this uh, specific gene or pathway are differentially expressed between control and treatment. Yeah, be, between the the two. Like between male and female, yeah, uh, be between uh, different conditions, yeah, that's their question. So in that kind of uh, collaboration and analysis, we, we just uh, take that question there. We just make clear what's the expect expectation on the other hand, or the expectation of, of our expectation, and then we do like differential expression analysis. Yeah, we can identify those uh, differential expressed genes. And then check whether their gene and their pathway uh, are there. Yeah, we can do functional enrichment analysis for the interest the gene list. Those are all hypothesis-driven uh, analysis and the interpretation. Yeah, each category have a lot of uh, uh, you know software in support of the analysis, like a differential gene expression analysis, like 
people may use the DSIG2, HR, yeah, and uh, those are very popular things. And the functional enrichment analysis, uh, David, uh, GSEA, enrichR, you know, a lot of things can can uh, can support those two category. Yeah, the last uh, tier, I, I call that discovery driven interpretation. That's usually uh, a move fun, yeah, move fun there. So we we, we just we just uh, uh, try to explore, yeah, what kind of interesting things, uh, either computational things or biological things, can be uh, derived from from the data, yeah, using some uh, like unsupervised, uh, you know, uh, or de novo uh, methods, yeah, uh, like we can so we can we can identify uh, gene modules uh, through those uh, de novo clustering or back clustering algorithms. Then before you doing the analysis, you do not know. How many clusters? How many gene modules you will identify, and uh, whether they are they are you know uh, biological biologically significant. So that's totally uh, you know uh, that's totally new to be discovered. Yeah. So using the tier four analysis, uh, you know we we usually can identify some uh, potential uh, new things. Yeah. To be validated. Yeah. And to be explored further. Yeah. And sometimes we can formulate some uh, uh, very uh, uh, much needed uh, com computational uh, pipeline there, and we can publish a two paper or web server paper. Yeah, and uh, uh, using discovery driven analysis is also very good to develop a long term collaboration. We are not just, you know, testing your hypothesis. We besides that we can provide some. Um, more potential uh, opportunities. We may work on that together, you know, in the future for grants and the paper. Yeah. So that that's basically my philosophy. Yeah. When I when I watching the uh, uh, RNA-seq data analysis pipeline, I, I will divide it into four categories, four tiers. Yeah. So that we are very clear uh, what kind of analysis we should carry out, and uh, in this specific you know situation. Yeah. Okay. Now we are talking sing single cell data. Yeah. Uh, heterogeneity, that's a key word. That's a key word in, in single cell data analysis. That's the most, uh, uh, in the strongest uh, rationale and uh, significance why we need to do single cell. Like this is the only example. When we say cancer tissue, yeah, in the cancer tissue, in the cancer cell population, it's not only cancer. Yeah. We, we have cancer cells. Yeah. We have immune cells. Yeah. We have all the, uh, other you know, fibroblast cells, yeah, different kind of cells are mixtured together in a complex disease tissue, yeah. And if we are using a traditional RNA-seq, we can get an expression pattern like show here, showcase here, yeah. This is an expression pattern, you know, can be generated from bulk RNA-seq data, but yeah, this is a combination or this is an average of uh, all different kind of uh, cell types, yeah. In each of the cell type, especially in complex disease cell types, the expression pattern should be very, very specific. Yeah. They may be very different from each other, even within a single cell type. Yeah. Uh, one cell could be different with another cell, yeah. Uh, but there may, may not be a pattern. Yeah. When you say a cell type, there should be a pattern showcased here, yeah, as showcased here. It's a combination, yeah, it may not be linear, could be non-linear combination of those cell types giving rise to this, uh, uh, this bulk level observation, yeah. So people will argue why we cannot use uh, bulk, yeah. The answer is uh, very quite similar with this example, yeah. In statistics, uh, we can take uh, average, yeah. And, uh, but it's not uh, always okay. Yeah. For example, uh, when we say what's the uh, the the you know annual income of the uh, American families, we always use medium. Yeah. We do not use average. Yeah. Because using average is it will have an issue. Yeah. When the var variation is huge, which means we have a lot of uh, rich, rich, rich people. If you take average. Like the example, the average net worth between Bill Gates and me is about 51 billion US dollar. 
And the reason is because he has a one one hundred two billion dollars. Yeah, I have nothing. Yeah, so that's the problem of average. And exactly think here. Yeah, if I using average to interpret, uh, like uh, to interpret the oncogene, the pathway in uh, cancer development, we will have a big big issue. Yeah, and that's why we are pushing single cell data analysis. We are pushing single cell, you know, sequencing. When we have the, those data generated, now it's our showtime. Yeah, we need to develop or we need to use the existing tools to analyze those data. I think that's the thing regarding single cell data. Okay. Uh, a quick uh, uh, comparison. Yeah, it's not uh, everything compared here, but between bulk RNA and the single cell RNA data, there are something uh, listed here. Like a bulk is a mixture of uh, multiple signals. Yeah, like I said. Yeah, and there is a non hypothesis. Yeah, in statistics we use uh, hypothesis zero. Non hypothesis in bulk is gene I in cell one and cell two have the same expression level. That's the underlying non hypothesis, but which is uh, definitely not correct. Yeah, in complex disease, even in health uh, uh, health sample. Yeah. So single cell data, yeah, you will not have that uh, non-hypothesis. Yeah, you can sequence every single cell in, in your data. Yeah, and you can observe the heterogeneity in, in each cell cell type, cell states, or cell clusters computational predicted. Yeah. So in terms of sample size, uh, we also discussed the small big data and the big big data in, in my previous slide. Yeah. So the bulk RNA usually we have uh, 10 to 1,000 samples. Yeah, if you have 1,000 bulk RNA data, that's huge. Yeah, but in single cell level, the cells could be hundreds to one million, several millions. Yeah, so we have enough uh, uh, cell samples. Yeah, to identify heterogeneity, to uh, to build uh, the cell atlas. Yeah, to identify some rare cell types. Yeah, to identify those uh, minimal residual disease cell types in, you know, in, in cancer. Yeah. So that's the power of single cell RNA data. Yeah. I think uh, Yujo showcased this one. Uh, I just uh, steal from uh, Yujo, Yujo's presentation. And uh, this is the technology development regarding single cell. Yeah. Uh, all the way from uh, SmartSig2. I think that's the one uh, very you know, popular one and established in 2012. And then we have C1, we have a job seek, we have 10x genomics. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's very interesting. 10x, 10x genomics, if you only purchase the minimal, uh, minimal, uh, you know, version of the equipment, it's just uh, maybe about $10,000 or even less. You can purchase one. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a small box. You can put it in your office on the desk. Yeah, uh, very convenient. Yeah, to prepare the the, the the single cell samples, yeah. and now we we have a more sequencing technology, like this one I want to mention ICI RNA seq. So this one uh, should uh, should represent the the new generation of single cell technology because in this kind of technology they can sequence uh, multi modality simultaneously. Yeah, uh, they they can sequence. Uh, uh, RNA and a tag. Yeah, they can sequence uh, maybe RNA and the mutation data simultaneously. That's so called a single cell multi omics. Yeah, uh, but I'm not sure whether whether this one is uh, exactly what I mentioned, and uh, and uh, we 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 can we will introduce more regarding this later. Okay, technology wise, yeah, and during uh, in all of the te technologies, there's two are very popular. Yeah. Uh, at least you should know their name. Yeah, SmartSeq2 and 10x genomics. Yeah, like uh, SmartSeq2 usually can generate thousand cells, and uh, 10x genomics is uh, much larger. Uh, I do believe this slide should be updated, and uh, because the technology are evolving very fast, now 10x genomics can can sequence up to uh, one million cells, and the SmartSeq2 can maybe 10,000 cells. Yeah, that's not a big issue currently. Yeah, but uh, there are very big uh, difference regarding number of genes you can call from per cell. Yeah, 
in SmartSeq2, you can call um, you know, a significant larger number of genes per cell than in 10x genomics because they have different preference. 10x genomics prefer to generate more cells, but they have a low depths in each of the cell. So basically, you, on, you can only call hundreds to 1,000 something of genes per cell, which means you will lose a lot of genes, maybe 90% of genes. Yeah. But in SmartSeq2, you can almost call you know, 10,000 genes, yeah, about half of all the genes. In the, in, the, in the cell, yeah. So that's the, the balance between these two technologies. That's why even now, Tenex Genomics is not only a technology popular in, in, you know, on market. If, uh, if uh, we have enough budget, maybe we'll sequence SmartSec2 and the sing single cell uh, Tenex Genomics together, yeah. In that case, in that case, you can combine those, gene, uh, those uh, single cell data, you can integrate uh, the gene, uh, single cell data in support of uh, more powerful in interpretation. Okay, and uh, uh, technical level, single cell, uh, SmartSeq2 will, will catch the full length mRNA, and uh, turn genomics only have a three prime ending capture. Uh, so if you want to answer, uh, what's the alt uh, alternative splicing yeah, uh, regarding the genomic mutation? You'd better have single cell smart sick two data, yeah, because those data, those reads are full length mRNA. Yeah, you have a lot of power to to do you know alternative splicing interpretation. Yeah, so uh, that's the basic comparison. So uh, that's why I suggest you at least remember uh, these two technologies uh, when a student when, be, before you uh, you you know starting uh, analyze single cell data. At least you should ask. Uh, your supervisor or ask the collaborator, so what's the technology you use in generating your data? Yeah, because uh, the, those, those two, two data uh, technology will gen generate totally two different kind of matrix, yeah, the totally different kind of gene expression. Yeah. So uh, then you, you, you should select uh, you know, specific tools yeah, in support of the analysis. Okay. okay. Uh, this slide, I'm uh, I'm sharing some uh, resources. Yeah, I definitely cannot uh, uh, go through them one by one, but at least uh, uh, those links are very very good resources. Uh, for example, you are a new person to single cell data. Uh, those links uh, should be very good resources for self education. Yeah, uh, I can I can click on the first one. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, on your screen is the slide or my, uh, my... Yeah, it's still the slides. It's still the slide, right. Okay, let me stop sharing. I can share again. Now you can see the, the website. No? Yes, yes. Okay. So th this is the first uh, uh, website, so called uh, Single Cell RNA Seq Tools. Yeah. In this one, we currently have uh, 681 tools yeah, for single cell data analysis with uh, uh, rank uh, with the letter yeah, and uh, also can be searched uh, by category. Like if you want to do some uh, clustering, you can cluster here, cl uh, click on this one here and the filter, and all the uh, tools, you know, claim that they can do uh, cell clustering. Yeah. And if you want to do gene network, single cell level, then uh, much less, but still a whole bunch of tools to be, uh, you know, to be explored. Yeah. And we also have some two developed by our lab here. Uh, name, how to search. Yeah. Yeah, you just in the table and uh, type the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this one is uh, is developed by, by my lab, and we also have uh, I think have other uh, other ones uh, in this uh, you know. 
in this website. Yeah, like this is a backclassing algorithm to identify gene modules. Yeah, from uh, bulk and single cell RNA seq data. Yeah, but the, the, the point is uh, there are a whole bunch of uh, tools you know here uh, for you to discover. Yeah, if you want to do single cell data analysis, absolutely the one we are introducing uh, on our class, so called CRAT, is also here. And uh, but b besides that, you know that's a uh, huge. Oh. Andrew, and besides the the thing I introduced, do you have anything else to to add regarding this? Uh, I think you can share your screen first. Can you see the slide? Mm, nope. Not sure. There is. Uh... Sorry about that. <laughs> or you can just share the your. Uh, desktop and uh, switch to your slides. I think that would also. Work. I'm sharing the desktop. Can you see the slide? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, and if you can, you have some other information you you can add. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so uh, the top tools are uh, related to the like uh, two bases. Uh, all kinds of single cell level tools, especially for the second one, is a uh, GitHub uh, collection. Uh, not only for the RNA-seq at single cell level, but also for other uh, single cell modalities, for example, single cell attack, single cell DNA-seq methylation, and kind of uh, web servers, tutorials. Uh, it's more like uh, more things that collected than the first one, but the first one is more specific to the single cell RNA-seq data analysis. And so these two resources, I highly recommend you that uh, uh, if you want to find something or you want to know more about the uh, status uh, of the development status of single cell tools, you can check on these two links. And then the databases, there are uh, not too many um, well-established single cell uh, databases. Um, so here are just leave, uh, Several of them, the first one is a very big one, the EBI, if someone has heard about that, uh, it's in the Europe, it's a Europe database for the uh, sequencing data. And this is just a special, special uh, specialized uh, archive uh, only for single cell RNA-seq data. Uh, well organized and uh, user friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, and even with more species other than human and mouse, Mm -hmm. It's a very good resource. And the uh, next several, uh, second one is for the Bro uh, from the Broad Institute. Uh, third is only for neuron cells. And the uh, last one is cancer cells. So if you have special interest in like neuron or cancer, you can check out this too. Oh, and okay. ju yeah, just be uh, one note is that uh, some of their databases may have some special uh, mm -hmm. pre-processing steps, like mm -hmm. for EBI. They're not doing the uh, normal alignment using the reference genome. They're doing the uh, pseudo alignment. Okay. So that you may find some different, uh, if like compared to the same data sets you pr processed and compared to theirs. Mm -hmm. okay. so that's uh, something you need to uh, know. And we also cover some courses and tutorial here uh, in case um, you're after this session, the workshop session, you're mm -hmm. still confused or have uh, more interest in the single cell uh, area, you can check out these links, especially for the, um, I think the second one, the Canvas Harvard ad uh, course. Um, you mean this one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry, that, not this one, the first one. Sorry about that. I, I changed the. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is the, uh, a, a very well organized tutorial that can guide mm -hmm. you 
from the very beginning uh, of the single cell RNA-seq analysis to the very end uh, includes uh, many kinds of uh, cool. on hand and uh, introductions to the analysis and the code wow. and uh, uh, the tools, right? And the CIRAT also included as a mm -hmm. major part here. So I believe if you can be like 100% sure uh, or uh, know what you're doing uh, from these uh, online tutorial, then you're like one of the master in, <laughs> in the single cell RNA seq analysis. Yeah, definitely. Sounds so, great. I, I think all these, uh, actually there are uh, more resources uh, about the tools, about the data, uh, that you can explore, but we think these several lists here are the most important or the most valuable ones that you can reach for uh, uh -huh. when you're new in this kind of uh, area. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, yep. Just a quick question. I, I, I know there are a lot of uh, single cell data, you know, archived on NCBI SRA database. Uh, you know, is there a specific reason, you know, why SRA is not listed here? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so before, uh, we always search for, like, uh, when we read a paper, there's, like, mm -hmm. a CPI, uh, mm -hmm. G, uh, GSC code, and we can trace for that data. So the problem is those data are, like, we don't know if that's the raw data or pre-processed or like normalized. Uh -huh. So sometimes it's gonna be hard to, uh, uh, you, you need to do more work to explore the data itself. Okay. Like, for example, if you're to, uh, for that kind of uh, paper, it just upload a raw data, you have to do alignment by yourself. Uh, so okay. alignment is sometimes um, just cost you uh, a lot of time to do it. Okay. So these databases, they all do like the normalization or ah. do the same pre-processing for the data they collected. Okay. So, yeah. So, so that's which, the which means uh, th these uh, databases we listed here, uh, they are more organized and yes. they provide some uh, pre-analysis of the single cell data uh, than, mm -hmm. than uh, NCBI, right? Correct. Okay. And some okay. of them, even with some, uh, uh, very simple visualizations, for example, the data, uh, clustering results or uh, some of the marker genes. Um, so if you like have some targets, you can use such a, like clustering results or marker genes to filter some of the, the data. You don't have to uh, go okay. through every, every single okay. one. Uh -huh. yep. Okay, no, I understand, yeah. But I, I will not put this knowledge into my proposal. Like, I actually will not like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew, for the for the uh, introduction, uh, yep. introduction of uh, of the resources. So I, I do believe, and I'm 100 percent sure, those online classes that did a much better job than me. And I'm more than happy to share the links with you and with the group of students and uh, faculty members. Uh, I think you're gonna learn a lot from uh, those classes. We we even you know watch the video together on our lab meeting if we have we are confused of something. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now we are you know coming to this uh, uh, com seems compl complicated single cell RNA-seq data analysis pipeline. Yeah, so we we will read this figure from left to right, and uh, I think uh, from the left. Uh, we're gonna have some uh, raw data, yeah, fast QFL, risk count, pre-processed expression matrix, and uh, you don't know better this than me. And the uh, 10x genomic sequencing data, they are have a, they have a very specific uh, format, so-called H5. Am I right, Yujo? Regarding the yes, yeah, raw data. Yeah, I will yeah. introduce more this afternoon. Sure, sure. Yeah. So there are different kinds of uh, uh, you know input, yeah, and you can get started from uh, different levels. Uh, you know, it depends on whether you will do uh, some uh, pre-analysis. Yeah, like uh, the section A, yeah, the, this color brown here is uh, mapping, yeah, quality control, alignment, uh, quantification. So we can change those uh, reads into some uh, uh, expression values. 
of a gene in a specific cell. Yeah. And then second part is pre-processing. Yeah, we can do imputation. Yeah, I, I, I will let you know why we need to do imputation because the dropout issue. Yeah, we, we have some slides regarding this and we do normalization because there are some uh, batch effect. Yeah, we, we, we know batch effect exists in, in bulk level data and they also exist in single cell level. Yeah, because the heterogeneity. So we, we do normalization and we do gene filtration. Yeah, so if, uh, uh, if we found uh, like uh, a gene only expressed in less than 5% cells among all the cells, then this gene may not uh, have a big contribution to any analysis. Then we will filter those genes out. Yeah, and the cell filter filtration is kind of similar. Yeah, if uh, in a cell majority, like 99% of the genes have no information, then this cell will be filtered out. Yeah, so those are all pre-analysis. Yeah, uh, has to be have to be carried out before. Uh, before any other folding analysis. <clears throat> the third part, C uh, in the middle, right one, yeah, this is the, uh, the largest piece of pizza on, on this uh, whole thing. And this so-called advanced analysis, uh, actually they can be uh, more organized, yeah, uh, if we, we go into categories, but uh, it, I cannot go through that because, as you can see, there are more, more than 600 tools in this part. Yeah, mm -hmm. And you can do trajectory analysis, cell clustering, uh, cell classification, differential expression analysis, marker gene identification, gene module detection, spatial analysis, regulatory network construction, cell type specific uh, pathway or, or, or regular identification. There are a lot of things yeah, in this part. Yeah. And uh, then in the section D, yeah, uh, the light purple part on the most right, we are talking about applications. Yeah. I think using single cell data, we are more close to the real clinical and uh, translational studies. Like we can do drug resistant analysis. Yeah. This is uh, one ongoing project in my lab. Yeah, we are using bulk and single cell RNA data uh, in a, in a deep transfer learning model in support of uh, drug resistance and the drug sensitivity analysis. Yeah, we can we can uh, identify uh, cancer biomarker. Yeah, and uh, uh, and cell development and cell cell intercommunication uh, and and uh, and the drug repurposing combination for treatment. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of applications can be enabled uh, by this uh, analysis pipeline. Yeah. So much more complicated than the traditional RNA-seq, if you remember the pipeline I, I showcased just now. Yeah. And that's not a surprise because the data are more uh, complicated and the data, are more information encoded in the data. Yeah. And we can do more. Yeah. We can do more. And uh, don't be scared. And uh, we have a lot of uh, existing tools in the public domain. Some of them are very, very user friendly, are very, very reproducible, are very, very robust. Robust. So you uh, you can get started uh, with using the existing ones. And uh, when you have uh, more knowledge, more insight, you you can develop some something new. Yeah, by yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sirat, yeah, Sirat is definitely the the, uh, the superstar, yeah, in in this whole pipeline I showcase here, yeah. If you you say hey, there's a 681 tools, yeah, uh, can solving the, the the some functionalities on, on this pipeline, and uh, I don't know I don't know which one should I get started with, and the answer is definitely Sirat, yeah. I personally like it very much, and uh, uh, Yujo is an expert here. Uh, Ujo, I used uh, this one from uh, your presentation. Uh, I think uh, yesterday you didn't finish the introduction of CIRAT. Uh, this is a very good uh, uh, good time slot for you to finish the introduction of CIRAT. Then uh, you can focus on the uh, the programming part in 3 to 4 p.m. How about that, Ujo? Okay, sure. Sounds good. Yeah, you can share your screen. Yeah. Get started from here and uh, 
uh, finish the introduction of CIRA. Yeah. Okay, can everybody see my screen here? Yep. On the full screen, not the split one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, talk about uh, the last uh, presentation. I mentioned the development history of CIRAT, and I briefly introduced the first version of CIRAT, which is designed for the spatial information and uh, the messaging journey uh, analysis. And in this version, uh, it's not very mature R package. It's a, it's a zip file in uh, uploaded as supplement file of this paper. Um, and in the threat 1.2, it's advanced version compared to the first one. Um, the paper, uh, uh, the, the goal of this paper actually is sharing a new technology is called Dropseek, which is the, uh, uh, it's like ancestor of the current 10, 10x genomics, this uh, company. Um, this company based on the Dropseek. Uh, all the, the theoretical uh, theories, um, things are based on this dropstick. And the CIRAS 1.2 design based on this pipeline and gave a better realization and more uh, analysis strategies. And uh, Satija, he put this um, code onto the GitHub and uh, includes more people to participate the coding part and contribute to this big package. And now um, let's switch gear a little bit because the rest of two on um, the rest version get involving get involved into the integration so the question is why we would do the integration actually um, based on the first two version those um, data were uh, derived from one experiment so it won't have any batch effect but in the in the real research Somebody want to design more things to explore more uh, results or more effect, uh, more um, uh, uh, real things, and so it will. Uh, so they maybe give them more uh, replicates uh, or give them a more different uh, treatment. And so the uh, confounder might be read up by this part. But what is confounder? Um, confounder means it's not a real causal factor, but the confounder will play a role in the causal factor analysis. Um, in the, in, uh, in, in, uh, basically, I think uh, the confounder is uh, what most we don't want to include in the analysis. So, um, but the single CRM stake is very expensive compared to the other experiments. Maybe some researchers don't have enough funding to do that work. Uh, so they maybe borrow the other uh, lab or other online uh, public available data to support their research. So um, they maybe includes the other um, the other experiment single cell data into their uh, analysis uh, uh, progress. And so uh, I borrowed this uh, graph, uh, this figure from the uh, third version of CIRAT. Uh, it's basically, uh, say, they use the eight patient and two treatments of the PBMC cell. PBMC cell is the cells in, the, in your blood. Um, they have one of uh, 14,000 cells from this uh, eight patient with two treatment. And if we simply cluster in those uh, 14,000 cells, um, you can clearly see that on the, uh, the uh, the cells clustered by those uh, treatment. You can see this part is treatment by uh, interferon gamma, uh, beta uh, stimulate, and the rest of part are control group. But it's not what we want because we want to know uh, the uh, subset of this PPMC. So we need to run some integration method. And you can see here this middle, uh, this graph in the middle is running the threat three version integration. And you can see here the control and the steel made group are uh, mixed well together. Um, and based on this topological structure, we do the uh, clustering. And you can see the subtype of those cells are clustered, are, are, are identified, uh, has been identified, such as here is naive T cell. It clearly show the integration, the importance of integration. It can remove the batch effect. Uh, regarding the control S uh, and the stimulation. So, 
based on this idea, uh, the Surat developed this algorithm, and uh, I won't get involved too much uh, algorithm detail because they use the mechanical correlation analysis and dynamic time warping uh, for integration. But you know, um, the the threat, uh, the, the, this this version of threat um, was do a very good job on the integration. You can see here before uh, these two data sets integrate together in this duo, um, uh, distinguished by the different treatment. You can see here is a control and there is a drug treatment. But after go through the uh, uh, the integration, you can see here the control and the control and the uh, treatment uh, integrate very well. And but this technology has their uh, disadvantages because they only focus on the single sign seek. Um, but uh, in recent research, in recent research, uh, since the model makes this technology um, has uh, has take very uh, important role in analysis. For example, we want to know uh, uh, besides the uh, transcriptomic information, we also want to know uh, the chromatin accessibility. Well, the chromatin accessibility indicates whether this gene can be um, translated, like whether this gene can be open before it's uh, before it's uh, transcript. Um, and also, we can. Hi, you draw. I I yeah. I want to quickly jump in. So the attack data is uh, to provide the genome scale chromatin accessibility. So with that information, we will know the cis regulatory region of a gene, whether you know that part is a chromatin accessible. Yeah, accessible. You know that that I think that's a more accurate uh, description oh, of yeah. single cell attack data. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, Ching, for uh, this comment. And uh, besides this chromatin accessibility. We also want to know whether uh, spatial play an important role in the analysis because remember uh, the first version of CIRAT uh, emphasized this spatial uh, uh, spatial information. The different parts of embryo, uh, uh, zebra embryo, uh, zebrafish embryo have a different expression level. So uh, based, based on this idea, we can imagine that if th this cell are the tumor uh, itself, whether we can see the different tumor uh, regions have played a different role uh, in the tumor development, and whether we can seek the new, uh, whether we can find the new um, target gene, uh, tar target uh, drug target uh, marker for uh, the therapies. And the immune phenotyping, that is another technology uh, surging recently. Um, is combine the surface marker of the uh, immune cells uh, with the gene expression level information. Um, but in the sum up, um, because more and more of uh, those technologies are called uh, multi-omics, including the transcriptomics, the spatial transcriptomics, and the uh, genomics and phenotyping is the proteomics level. Uh, how can we integrate those um, different omics level together, and the CRAT 3.0 pro provides this method to uh, fulfill this goal. And they use uh, algorithm again use the uh, mechanical correlation analysis with anchor algorithm. This anchor is derived from the mutual nearest neighbor. Uh, again, I won't introduce too much detail in this algorithm, but um, but. In a sh but, but in one word, you, you, you should know in the, the take home messages in the threat 3.0, the latest version, they can do the integration between the different multi omics data. And they also improved their uh, virilization part regarding the threat package. And uh, this is the whole history of how the uh, threat development, uh, how the threat package got developed. Uh, so, any questions so far? Yes, I, I think that's a good time to 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 answer questions because we we threw out a lot of information this this morning in the past uh, fifty minutes. Uh, any questions are welcome. Yeah, please.
if there is no questions, I will ask one question about this afternoon. Uh, did anyone receive the R script I sent uh, yeah, yesterday? Uh, have you installed the Syriac package successfully? Uh, <clears throat> uh, um, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, I have a very quick question um, regarding about the integration of the S the RNA seq. Um, so for this part, dimensionality is very important to see the gene expression analysis. Yeah. Uh, you, you mean the uh, dimension, you mean dimension of the data itself? Um, yes. Oh, um, yes, because uh, the raw data really contain a lot of dimension here the dimension emphasized is regarding the genes um, typically we regarding one genes as one dimension two genes as two dimension and we got the idea if we have uh, thousands of genes we have thousands of dimension but in the following analysis we won't include all the dimensions into the following analysis instead we will pick some highly uh, representative uh, genes um, include into the following analysis. This part I will introduce this afternoon, the next section uh, in detail. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I want to follow up uh, regarding the question. Yeah, maybe, yeah, uh, my understanding is a little bit different. So uh, uh, the question should ask uh, when, when did they do integration, how, how they take care of the gene features? Uh, if in that meaning, and uh, uh, like in CIRAT, uh, in, in one gene, uh, in one single cell, SCRNA data, single cell RNA data, you have uh, like uh, 1, 000, 1, 10, 000 genes, uh, 1, 000, 1, 000 cells, and in another matrix, you have another 10,000 genes and another 1,000 cells. When they do integration, basically they will identify the overlapped or common genes in both of the the matrix, and then uh, using them as the features to combine those uh, two matrix into one. And uh, you draw, you, maybe you can go to the previous slide. Yeah, it's something like this. So you, if you have a two matrix, they will, they will first identify which genes are overlapped and shared with, by, by these two matrix. Because different single cell RNA data will have different genes called yeah, due to the you know due to their different uh, conditions, after identifying their overlapped overlapped the genes, they will combine this these two matrix into one matrix. Yeah, and uh, only using those shared gene, uh, only only those shared gene will be kept for all the uh, folding analysis. So that's another detail regarding the integration. Yeah, hope the information help. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, that's a very good one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I always uh, uh, curious how they do integration. And uh, actually, I ask this question to my students uh, several times. And uh, not only for single cell RNA-seq data, if we have other kind of uh, single cell level data, chromatin accessibility and uh, mutation, uh, no matter what kind of other modality is, they will first change that modality to gene. Yeah, they will build a link between those uh, accessibility peaks with with genes. After they, you know, they take the translation to genes, then they can combine two matrix with the genes as features. That's the current philosophy when people do integration between different modalities, between different uh, uh, information of single cell. Yeah. So that's that's something we, we will discuss further, yeah, in, in, in next days. Okay, and uh, I think uh, we are almost 2 p.m. and we may take one more questions if there is. Um, okay. I do have another question. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's about spatial analysis. It's mostly primarily about um, the cell's condition, but not the location it's at. Usual, 
can you give a quick uh, answer to this? You mean the condition means um, the different treatment of the uh, when, when, uh, of those cells? Um, yes, like primarily about like their functionality or like their biological process. Oh, uh, in short, I cannot answer this question because I do not do this experiment. But the spatial uh, information is about uh, the, the coordinates. It will focus on the different region of this a group of cell and focus on this group of cell and do the transcript analysis. Yes, uh, I, I think you draw, you 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 give the you know correct answer. Uh, the, the information in spatial transcriptomic analysis, uh, usually we will have a single cell uh, data expression along with uh, imaging data. So the imaging technology is so-called SMFish, uh, MSFish or SMFish. So using that one, besides the expression level in every single cell, uh, you will get uh, coordinates of uh, the cells yeah, in terms of their location real location in, in your tissue, yeah. So you will have a uh, functionality, a functional enrichment analysis along with their spatial information, yeah. Uh, so that's uh, the, the basic the spatial transmitomic analysis, yeah. It's usually uh, together with the uh, imaging data, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, I think we, we will have one hour break in between and yeah. the, during the, yeah, during the one hour, hopefully everyone can try to install CIRAT uh, on your local computer. That will, you know, significantly facilitate uh, the the hour between three and four. Uh, and we are more than happy to answer more questions uh, uh, by then. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Naren and uh, Nasty, shall we stop here? Yes, I think we can stop here. I can stop okay. recording and then we can join again at three to four. Okay. And, yeah, thank you. See you all later.